Ooh. Okay. If you're new here, is that how I start? Hello and welcome to this week's video. Today is a dating video. I feel like it's been a really long time since I've done a dating video, but if you follow me on TikTok, then you know that I'm doing a dating series on TikTok. I'm basically going through all of the dating apps that are very available in Korea from like the most North American, so I'm talking Hinge and Bumble, all the way through to the most Korean, so something like Amanda or, uh, what's the other one glam oh god someone on tiktok who watches my youtube asked me to do like a longer format video to talk about dating over here so i thought i would start by basically explaining what you can expect to find on the dating apps that i have used here in korea and i know i've talked about dating apps before or like dating culture i think i've done one video on dating culture which is now floating somewhere up here and also one video specifically on glam, which is also now floating somewhere up here. But this video is a little bit different because first of all, I've been here for two years now, which uh, is a long time. It's actually the longest I've lived abroad. And also I've been on many a more dating apps, but not many a more date, which we'll unpack another time. If you're new here, hi, my name is Kimi. I'm a foreigner expat immigrant living in Seoul, South Korea, and I like to talk about it on the internet. Sometimes I talk about my job, sometimes I vlog my daily life, and other times apparently I talk about dating apps, which is what I'm doing today. So if you're interested in any of that, be sure to hit subscribe and let's get to the video. <laughs> so like I mentioned over on my TikTok, I'm actually doing a series where I'm spending one week on each app and doing my gosh darn hardest effort to basically try to get a date. Starting off with Hinge, I'm just gonna be completely honest with you, I wouldn't even use it here. There are a few people I know who have found matches on Hinge, but the list of people that are on the app is just really not long. <laughs> that was a weird way to say that. But not many people are on Hinge, it's not super popular here. Um, so most of the time what you're gonna find if you're swiping on Hinge is you're going to find people who have just moved here um, or people who are traveling here. So obviously when you first get here, you're gonna default to the apps that you know and love, or I mean some people will default to the apps they know and love. Um, but just because something's popular in North America doesn't mean it's popular here. So I think that's true for both Hinge and Bumble. Hinge has even less than Bumble though. Another thing you might have guessed specifically about Bumble and Hinge is that they don't really reflect the demographics of the actual peninsula. So when you are swiping on Hinge and Bumble, you are more likely to match with or see um, other foreigners and a lot of foreign born Koreans or people who moved abroad when they were young. They'll use these apps as well because like I said, they're just more popular in North America. So you're less likely to find someone who's grown up in Korea and lived in Korea long term on these apps specifically. With that being said, that also means that most of my conversations on these apps have been in English. On Bumble, there's the odd occasion when I'll have a conversation with a Korean or in Korean with a Korean. I've never had a conversation in Korean with a foreigner, <laughs> another foreigner. Um, so yeah, you're definitely gonna have more English conversations. Uh, and as someone who like likes to be cheeky and witty and like flirt successfully, um, I'm, but I seem to be much more successful on these apps because I can be cheeky and witty because the conversations are happening in English. Um, I'm terrible at flirting in Korean, like terrible, because you know, I barely speak it. So I have tended to skew better and have more success on an app like Bumble uh, than I have on basically a Korean version of Bumble. Moving on, there is one uh, North American app that is actually quite popular in Korea and that would be Tinder. It's definitely not everyone's favorite and you're gonna find, um, you're sorry, you're more likely to find a particular individual on Tinder. <laughs> Tinder is just like Tinder at home. It is full of fuckboys. So if you are interested at all in trying to secure like a long-term relationship out of your dating app experience, 
it's going to be harder to find on Tinder. Not impossible, but it's just like at home, Tinder is really uh, easy to use to hook up with people. So a lot of people here use it just to do that. But if you are looking specifically to find a relationship, it's going to be harder to find on Tinder. <sighs> I would know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yes, <laughs> if you are swiping on Tinder, you can expect to have some Korean conversations. Um, so it's good to know like a couple of key phrases, which I'm not going to say on camera because I hate the way I sound speaking Korean, but knowing how to say like, obviously, hello, nice to meet you. Um, what did you do today? Have you eaten dinner? Um, the weather is nice. <laughs> These are common phrases that people will send to you, or I guess you'll send to them. If it's raining, make sure to ask them if they're bringing an umbrella. That's a popular one. Moving on to our last classification of dating app, you have like the Korean Korean dating apps. So these are apps that were founded and developed in Korea and take on um, some cultural nuance as they were developed here. So these two apps that I'm going to be exploring on my TikTok journey are Amanda and Glam. And I've been on Glam before, I've talked about it before, and basically Glam is the app that gives you an attractiveness score. And then based on how attractive you rank in this app, then it matches you with specific people. So that is something that I can imagine would not go over well in a North American market or a Western market. It's very different and I think, you know, having the freedom to swipe on whoever I want is important. And you still have that potential in Glam. Um, it's just not what they like push for you, if that makes sense. So if you've ever been on Hinge, you know that, I don't know if it's like weekly or whatever, but Hinge will send you like a match and be like, we think you match this person really well. Like a preferred match. I can't remember what it's called. So basically Glam does the same thing, but it's based on your actual attractiveness rank and it's daily. So you get like two people who are in your tier. You get two people who are in your tier and then like you can match with them. Um, but then also there is like a section where you can just like swipe and match with people. Also though, what's different about Glam is like you don't have to put money towards Tinder, Bumble, or Hinge to be like, really successful there but on glam you do have to have like gems to open a chat which is like really discouraging because only if you open the chat and they don't respond can you get like your gems back to try with somebody else but if you open a chat you have a little bit of a conversation and then it just like you know sometimes that happens then you don't get those gems back so you have to be really careful about like who you want to spend your gems on um or just pay a lot of money to get more gems but like i'm not no i can't do that i can't do that i would rather just have them sit in my matches and just like hope and pray that they will open the chat with me i really can't be bothered to spend money on it that just, there's something about that that just makes me feel really bad about myself i don't know spending money to get someone to talk to me it's weird i don't sorry it's not weird it's different that's more or less how glam works. Um, the other thing about glam, if I'm being completely honest with you, I have never seen a foreign man on that app. And I mean, it's not like I've been on it for years and years, but I've been on it for like a solid four months and never came across a foreign man in my recommendations or just swiping, which I thought was really interesting. Um, 100% of my glam conversations are in Korean. I've never spoken to anyone in English on there. Um, when I do spend my money, spend my gems to open up that chat, it's always happening in Korean, um, which makes, makes sense, but also makes it much more difficult for me. <laughs> and then the other app is Amanda. The other Korean based app, um, is Amanda, which I have not been on, but I think will be very interesting to go on because you hear a lot of anecdotal accounts about foreign experiences on um, Amanda specifically because if they find out you're a foreigner, they kick you off the app. <laughs> so the thing with Amanda is that just like Glam, you have to submit your photos and only if you're like really considered attractive enough do they let you onto this app. And one of the things that happens is that foreigners will get flagged at this stage and they'll be denied access to the app at all. 
Um, but sometimes foreigners will sneak through that first level and you know, they'll be on the app, they'll be having Korean conversations, they'll be matching with Korean people, and then all of a sudden they won't be able to access the app anymore and they get a message from the system that basically says, at this time, Amanda's not available to foreigners. But it's wild because I think probably the idea or the developer's purpose was to like to make a place where people in Korea could date comfortably in Korean, but if there is a foreign born person or foreigner who is deemed attractive enough to be on this app and is successfully, oh, sorry, the fact that you even have to be attractive enough, like if the person is not causing problems and is using your app successfully, I don't understand why you would push them off it just based on their ethnicity. So anyways, <laughs> I can't speak too much to it because it has not happened to me. And like I said, these are anecdotal stories so we will just have to see how I go about it, how successful I am, um, if I even make it onto Amanda. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and call this the end of this week's video. Um, so yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Also, if there's anything that you want me to talk about, go ahead and leave it in the comments or you can message me on Instagram or leave a comment on my TikTok. That's how this video came to life, through a TikTok comment, so yeah. Engage, because I'm watching people. <laughs> okay, that is a sign that it's time to go when I start making weird comments like that. So, yeah. I'll see you next week. Bye.